Hi guys, Graham here again from Bainbridge, your leaders in power products. Um, just wanted to put a, um, a video together basically just to touch on a couple of areas in regards to lithium batteries and a lot of the concerns around safety aspect of lithium batteries and how to treat them, what to do with them, how to use them um, and also with the new rules and regulations for for caravans, RVs and so forth which actually it came in um, on the 18th of November last year however they had a year's grace to be able to put it into action so the caravan builders and so forth and anybody doing repairs to their vans so but as of the 18th of November this year it is in full force so if you've got a van that hasn't been built yet or has just taken delivery if it's plated after the 18th of this month it has to comply with the new AS standards 3001-22 um, which basically outlines a lot of things that you have to do to your vans now and some of those areas are around batteries not just lithium batteries but batteries in general um, we obviously will be touching on the lithium because we only do lithium batteries here at Bainbridge and we actually have a booklet um, that you can go to our website and have a look at um, I'll just grab it here sorry um, so if you go to our website and you know, look at one in one of our new lithium batteries, the Bluetooth range. You can actually get the data sheet that comes out. It gives you a bit of information about the battery, but it also gives you guides on how to install the batteries, where you can install the batteries, what the rules and regulations are in relation to where you mount the batteries. Some of them um, talk about the fact that if they're external from the van, they've got to be IP rated. So ours are IP67, which means they're waterproof and uh, suitable for that and meet the standard. There are also IE. Uh, C62619 compliant, which is the inter, uh, international standards, which is Australian uh, backing as well. So the batteries fully meet that standard and the certification to say that. Um, so if you're looking at buying batteries or upgrading batteries, make sure that you have all these things that uh, you ducks in a line because it can be a fairly costly expense if something happens and you weren't compliant and therefore insurance found a way out of covering your claim or uh, for anything down the track. This also applies to if you've got a 20 year old van and you decide that you want to update it, um, if you're changing chemistry from what's already in there. If you've got a lithium battery in there and you're replacing it, then that's fine. But if you've got an AGM lead acid style battery in there and you want to upgrade to lithium, you will have to comply with the same rules and regulations as a new van. So there's lots of little things in there that, that there's gray areas that people aren't too sure about. So this little document is great for that. So a couple of other things that have come from that, uh, and I've just got a list here of um, questions that uh, we've had recently been sent in to us or been posted on our Facebook page uh, and to our, on our computers and also sent us to actual sales staff um, and uh, our service technicians. So one question is how do I suppose dispose of my used or dead lithium battery? Now that's a good question because you can't just go and throw it in your local domestic bin you can't throw any batteries really in there as well but especially for lithium they have to be treated in a different way because there's lots of different chemistries of lithium and this is where there's a lot of confusion you know about fires and things blowing up and catching on fire and things like that there's there are quite a few different chemistries of lithium now the ones that we use in your caravan your four-wheel drives and that type of uh, scenario are lipo so li PO phosphate. So they're lithium ferrous phosphate. Lithium iron is another one. But there's this is where there's confusion because there's lithium ion and there's lithium ion. So the difference is there's lithium ION and lithium IRON, which is the category from your ferrous phosphate. So iron is a mineral obviously, and the ferrous, uh, ferrous phosphate style of batteries is the safest chemistry of lithium, pretty much the safest chemistry of, of battery on the market, because they are governed by uh, a BMS in there, which uh, battery management system inside the batteries, which shuts them down internally if they start getting outside the parameters. So if it gets too hot, it'll shut down. If it's too cold, it will shut down. Um, if it's short circuit in something that's connected to the battery, it'll shut down and also over short, over current protection. If it gets too low, uh, it, critically low, it'll shut down and that's the one that where people have problems trying to wake it up, but that's a different video. Um, so yeah, so it has got a lot of safety aspects and safety features built into the BMS for that reason. 
But these smaller style of batteries don't have that. So to dispose of any lithium battery, what I would suggest is to just look up or Google for your closest lithium accredited battery recycler or disposal warehouse in your area. There are quite a few of them around. A lot of your standard battery recyclers are authorised to take lithium batteries because once again, as I said, all different types of lithium have to be treated different ways. You, like I said, your lithium ferrous phosphate in your car is a sealed battery, it's in a sealed prismatic cell, uh, or within our batteries they are, but you know, like your little pouch batteries, they're, they're not. They're a totally different aspect and I'll get to that later. So yeah, so my suggestion is just look up. There are quite a few of them around, doesn't matter what major city or um, state you are in Australia. Just have a look um, and, and Google for lithium disposal and there's quite a few places and there's quite a few government places you can take them to as well. So that's the first question. Second question. I hear about lithium batteries catching on fire. How do I know if my batteries that I've got or intend to buy are safe? So, as I was stating before, if you had a look at the previous um, question, there's different chemistries of lithium. So there's lithium cobalt, there's lithium magnate, there's, there's lithium um, iron, and there's lithium ferrous or lipo, uh, lipo-4. And that's the one that said we use for, uh, for drives, caravan, camping and so forth. Very safe in that respect. The ones that are catching on fire are the batteries that are like in your e-scooters, um, phones, um, computers, um, all lithium, all different type of uh, smaller devices where they can't have a, a proper cell, like a prismatic cell, and they, can't have a, and they don't have a BMS. So therefore, they have what we call a pouch cell. Now, there are some cheap and nasty batteries coming in from China which are full of pouches as well. And this is the difference, you buy a good quality battery that says prismatic and you won't have that issue. Now, this is an example of a pouch. Now, if this was on charge and still kept going at the time, it probably may catch on fire and I'll explain the reason why. What's actually happened in this case is the pouch has overheated or got too hot and it's swollen. So inside here, if we actually take this apart and I'll show you, this is one of those like little jump pack type uh, chargers. And of course, people keep these in their car and your glove box under the seats and so forth, things like that, which is why we say stool them in a cool place. Now, as you can see, there's two little pouches here on the outside, but then there's also two pouches on the inside because that gets it to the, to the capacity that it needs to do. As you can see, they're like a pillow. So back in the day, they used to be called pillow batteries. Uh, we call them pouch batteries now. So as the chemistry inside of here, which is probably more than likely a, a cobalt uh, or, or an iron, but a, a type of scenario, if that expands and that explodes, as soon as the, uh, the chemicals inside of that are exposed to air or water, they will poof. So yes, I did say water, you'd think, oh, water will put it out. No, it won't. It gets really, really hot, fizzles out. Um, but generally, they will just ignite and catch on fire and go bang. So that, that's one of the reasons. As I said, the batteries in your caravan and the cars aren't like that. They're not going to do that. If you're hearing about caravans that are catching on fire and doing this and doing that, 99% of the time, I can guarantee you, it's got nothing to do with the battery itself, but how it's connected, wired into the system, someone who doesn't know what they're doing, are doing it. And generally, what they've probably done is put two smaller cable size on connected to something, and the fuse is too large for what the cable capacity is there to carry the current and therefore the cable's gotten hot, extremely hot if they're pulling a bit of current through there. The cable melts, it catches on fire and then everything's around it goes up on fire as well. Once the lithium battery does catch fire, then it is a hard thing to put out, but it just doesn't self explode by itself at all, catch fire by itself. This is where the problem is. It's these types of devices and that's the same type of thing that's in your, in your phone. So you feel it getting hot in your pocket or if you left it on charge. So my rule of thumb is, if it, you know that it's charged, just disconnect it. Lithium batteries will stay charged for a very long time. They don't need to be set and left on a charger all the time. Here's another one, same thing. Here's another one, same thing. A lot of this can be because they've left them on charge and that BMS isn't there to shut it down. So therefore then it keeps charging, keeps charging. As it get, keeps charging, it overcharges, gets hot, swells, causes an issue. So that's one type. I'll move on to this. This is my own personal, one of my personal computers, which I had sitting in an office 
did realise that it was left turned on with its little um, docking station. I thought the docking station was uncharged. And only a few weeks ago, because uh, I used another laptop, and I went in there and I looked at this and I thought, oh, that seems a bit weird. Um, why is the flap down on that? So this is just a Microsoft Surface. So it wasn't a cheap computer when it first came out. But as you can see here, you can see how it's expanded. Exactly the same thing. It's got a pouch battery in there. I'll show you on this end. Exactly the same thing. You can see how that's expanded because the pouch battery inside has just expanded. If I left this too much longer, we could have had a catastrophic event, I'm telling you. Um, that could have very well and truly gone up in flames. So I was quick to nab that. So once again, yeah, probably pays just to you know check these things and turn them off rather than just leave them sitting on there. So getting into that, that's what we're talking about with the fires and so forth. So yeah, all I want to do is to put you at ease and put your mind at rest to let you know that lithium ferrous phosphate batteries are not in that same category and um, shouldn't be treated in that category. So, moving on to the next question. Can I charge my lithium battery with a normal lead acid charger? Well, the simple answer is yes, you can. It's not going to make it blow up, it's not going to make it catch on fire, it's not going to do anything silly like that. However, there are a few things that you do need to look out for because not all lead acid battery chargers or lead or chargers in general are the same. You've got your smart chargers, you've got your old school chargers and so forth. A lot of your new smart chargers go through a lot of stages of battery charging, which you don't need for lithium. But the most critical thing is if it does have a, a procedure in its one of its stages where it goes into equalization, equalization if you can't turn that equalization off, do not connect it because you can't equalise your lithium batteries from that type of charger because they have to have independent cell charging and a normal AGM style of battery won't get to the right voltage that's required to do that with a lithium battery. So unless your battery can, your charger can be isolated and the equalisation turned off, yes you can still use it. The next thing to keep an eye out for is the charge rate. So with some lithium batteries, they have a various range of between 14.4, 14.6, in some cases 14.2. So if your charger is a standard charger for a lead acid battery, it's generally around 14.4. However, if it's on an AGM mode, it can be up to 14.7. Well, that's too high for a lithium battery. 14.2 to 14.4 is what's recommended for a lithium battery. Um, because once you get to a cell, it, you don't want to be trying to overcharge uh, individual cells within your lithium battery, so that's why we cap it at that 14.4. So once again, if you can change that, 14.2 to 14.4 is what we would recommend to set that to. The next thing to look at is the fact that, um, as I stated before, your AGM batteries are rated to hold, be fully charged at around 12.8 to 12.9 volts. So therefore then the charger floats at 13.2. A lithium battery fully charged is around 13.3 to 13.5, which means it would normally float somewhere between 13.6 to 13.8 volts. So therefore then because your AGM battery or a lead acid battery charger is already turning off and floating at 13.2, that in turn is only around about 80% charge off your lithium battery, which means you're never going to charge it up to full capacity. So that in itself isn't necessarily going to kill the battery, but over a long period of time, it can diminish its um, capabilities. But those other things, if they don't do that, that's where you can have failure and maybe damage your battery and the manufacturer may not warranty the battery because of its mis misuse by not charging correctly. So for that reason, we, I would say yes, if you need to get out of trouble, you need to get some power back into your battery to get it charged up or, or um, just to get it going and then you can whack it back in your car and you might have a DC, a DC that charges it. You can do that, but my recommendation would be to get a dedicated charger that does all chemistries, lead acid, AGMs, uh, lithium, sodium and um, calcium batteries, they are starting to become on the market more and more now. We've got a couple of brands of chargers and even our own chargers that, that do all, all chemistry batteries. So it's not like you have to have a separate charger for everyone, you just move for the times and get a charger that does all of them. And uh, that's what I would recommend. Okay, so the next question is, taking it one step further, in that case, what charger should I use for my lithium battery? So as I just stated before in the previous um, question, 
I would, uh, and we would recommend here at Bainbridge Technologies to get a charger that does the chemistry of batteries that you want it to do. So if you've got a vast array of batteries, just a lead acid cranking battery in your car, an AGM battery in a power box or something, or in your boat or whatever, uh, and a lithium battery for your four-wheel drive, caravan, camper van, whatever, yes, you can get chargers that will do all three. The next thing to look at though is what the capacity is. So if you've got various different capacities of chargers, um, and battery banks, well then, you know, it is hard to get a one fit all in that, in that uh, area. But my suggestion would be is le at least get a battery charger that has a lithium algorithm and a profile that you can set for lithium and preferably a profile that you cus can customise. So therefore then, some specific lithium battery manufacturers specify that it has to be charged 14.6 volts, it has to be uh, over a certain period of time, and it has to have this and it has to have that. So yes, you can get charges that you can put those parameters in there to do that and um, do it quite safely. And that way gives your battery the best opportunity that it has to give you the longevity and probably last longer than you and I will be on the planet for. If you look after them, that's the way that they will, they will go. So yes, the question would be, having a charger with a fixed profile is good, but having one with an adjustable or customizable profile is even better, and you can customize it to then charge the battery for specifications that you require. Okay, next question, um, and moving on probably to the last one for this video, so it doesn't go super, super long, is lithium batteries for camping, what's best? That's a pretty broad, broad question. Um, my answer to that would be one that suits your needs. Now that can be quite easily something that's small and portable. If you're just doing overnighters and you want to run a fridge and maybe a couple of camp lights, you know, a small and portable sort of 80, 75 to 100 amp hour battery is more than enough to do that. A 100 amp hour battery can run a small size 30 to 40 litre fridge for, you know, at least two days, three to four days sometimes, depending on how you treat your fridge, uh, without any battery charge going in. But if you were going to be staying for that period of time, I would suggest suggest investing in a small portable solar um, blanket or panel so that as soon as you get to where you are, plug it in and use the solar panel and to charge, well not necessarily charge your battery, because your battery should be 100% charged if you start there, but cover the loads so that by the time you get into night time, you've got a 100% charged battery that you know will get you through the next day. And then if it is an overcast and rainy day, well then you've still got the best chance of getting through to the following day. So if it's just for a weekend, a small little battery uh, is quite suffice uh, to do so. If you want something that's more permanent, you can get uh, a battery that's specific to the vehicle that you've got and therefore then if you're living out of your, when I say living out of your vehicle, but your fridge is in there and all your accessories in there, if it's a canopy or if it's a wagon set up like a tourer, well then, and used for camping, then that's fine as well. So I would get one that suits your needs, but if you're going to be camping for extended periods of time and you go away for a week uh, or so, you may need something that's a little bit bigger. Now that doesn't mean that you've got to have a heap of batteries, we've just released a new range of batteries where for the old standard um, NZ70 size battery, we've actually got a 300 amp hour lithium battery. That equates to about five to six hundred odd um, genuine lead acid batteries of virtually the same size. That's a massive amount of batteries, which you're never going to go just sticking into that in your car. But the 300 amp hour is going to last you for a couple of weeks, no problems at all. And it will run all the things you need to do. It will keep the cooktop going if you've got an induction cooker. It will run your um, you know, air fryer. It will run your um, cooking um, and your water for coffees um, and even coffee machines, your pod machines, all those sorts of things because you can run, it's got a 250 amp continuous PMS in it, which means you can run up to a 3000 watt inverter. So from small to large, I, I recommend the battery that suits your needs the most and that can also entail where it's going to fit, how you're going to carry it. We've got some little um, packs coming in Chris, uh, after Christmas now um, that are a small battery with connectors and everything in it as well. So you've got plugs for USB and um, for Sega sockets and Anderson plugs and connectors with an 80 amp charger and uh, an 80 amp um, battery uh, in it as well. And it's a nice little tiny unit that you can throw in any car, in your boat, leave it at your campsite, go for the picnic for the day, put, take your small fridge so you don't have to take an esky and worry about ice. 
So there's lots of different situations that you can utilize these for. So all I can say is, the best battery for you is what suits your needs. If it's small, large, you're on a budget, you know, we've got budget conscious batteries there as well. But the best thing I can recommend is one that suits you so that gets you out in this great country of ours exploring and you know, see the outdoors and not stuck at home thinking, oh, if I can do this, if I can do that, just get out there and do it. But as long as you know that you've got a battery that can do what you want it to do, that is the best battery for camping for you. So whatever suits your needs. So until next time, I'll say bye for now and we'll continue the series with the next lot of questions in the next week or so. Bye for now.